Hello info person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss a couple of new studies that essentially try to answer one question. Knowing that planet Earth and the solar system are traveling across the galaxy and knowing that the local region and the so-called local bubble is filled with a lot of other material including various clouds and even nearby stars going supernova, what effects, if any, did all of this have on planet Earth? And is there any evidence that something here on Earth was actually affected by all of these interactions and by traveling through different regions of space? And so in this video, we're going to discuss two separate studies. The study by Jesse Miller and his team that investigated interactions with massive interstellar clouds two and seven million years ago. And a study by Caitlin Nogiri that investigated potential signs of previous supernova in order to basically find out what we know about all of this so far and how all of this might have influenced the planet in the last 10 million years. But first, let's actually look at the map of all of this from, I guess, a kind of a top-down perspective. This is actually a beautiful map we've discussed before, created by Kevin Jardine, the link for which you can find in the description. And right here you see the sun, but you can also see that it's not really traveling through empty space. It seems to be in between various clouds, and it also seems to be relatively close to various powerful stars, such as Sirius B, that actually do produce a lot of interstellar effects with many individual stars very often producing their own bubbles which can and do influence neighboring stars. And here on planet Earth, in the last decade or so, scientists made a lot of different discoveries in a lot of different deposits of things that very likely came from outer space from other stars. For example, as recent as 2019, scientists studying ice in Antarctica found definitive signs of iron-16 which extremely likely got there from outer space, and it actually landed on our planet in recent times. And this was probably coming from these interstellar clouds located close to us. And so today, based on various observations from various telescopes, and of course missions like the Voyager probes, researchers believe that the solar system is technically located inside a really large region, thousands of light years across, referred to as the local bubble. This is a low-density region, possibly formed by multiple supernova in the last 20 million years, and it basically represents a kind of a bubble, a bubble of empty space, in between a lot of other locations in the entire galaxy. But deep inside this bubble, if you basically zoom in, you'll start discovering additional smaller clouds. And so it just so happens that one of these clouds, the local interstellar cloud, seems to be affecting our sun, and it's quite likely that the Sun entered this region approximately 10,000 years ago. Now, we obviously have no idea what effects this might have had on the planet, but also, as far as we know, this is also the time when suddenly the climate on planet Earth stabilized quite dramatically, which obviously led to all of the advances and all of the development in human culture. But this is probably just a correlation, not really a causation, and so, as of today, we have no idea what effects this might have had, or if it has any effects at all. So obviously these clouds are still a little bit mysterious. But we do know that at least 20 different supernova very likely happened in the last 11 million years in order to produce this local bubble. And when these supernova happen, they obviously produce a lot of heavy elements, including iron 60. And so by investigating the geology of planet Earth, in the last few years, researchers discovered that there seem to be at least two main peaks for this particular element. One seems to have happened approximately 2 million years ago, and one approximately 5 to 6 million years ago. And both, hypothetically, could have been the result of some kind of a nearby supernova. But the question is obviously, did this have any effect on the planet itself? And did this transform the planet, or possibly even transform life on the planet, in any way? Well, the researchers in one of these studies speculated that it might have had some effect. Mostly because the amount of radiation planet Earth is exposed to would very likely increase quite dramatically. And so in this case, the later supernova from 2 million years ago, that they now believe very likely happened in the location known as Tucana Horologium, was very likely a result of a really massive OB star that only existed for just under 2 million years and formed an extremely massive explosion. This was of course one of the explosions responsible for the local bubble. And so at a distance of approximately 250 light years away from us, this supernova potentially increased the overall cosmic radiation that might have had certain biological effects that might have had a chance to increase mutations in certain species. 
thus maybe increasing diversification or at least increasing the amount of mutations. In other words, in this study, the main point is that the amount of radiation could potentially lead to dangerous DNA mutations. But we know that generally, increasing radiation may not necessarily trigger an extinction, but could trigger increasing mutations and even change climatic conditions, mostly by affecting various chemical reactions in the upper atmosphere. But here it's really important to note that when it comes to radiation, we actually still don't really have a very clear understanding on how it affects biology long term and how it affects the evolution of life on the planet as well. Nevertheless, the implication from the paper is for the increase in radiation approximately 3 million years ago that might have had certain effects on the planet. And all of this as a result of traveling through this local bubble that essentially had multiple supernova within a few hundred light years away from the sun. But we know that the solar system very likely entered this bubble approximately 5 to 6 million years ago. And we also know that around this time there is that other increase in iron 60 visible in the fossil data. And so here it's actually quite possible that in the last 6 million years, as the sun traveled through this unusual bubble, planet Earth started to accumulate a lot of these supernova remnant materials and obviously also experienced a lot of effects from various nearby supernova. Interestingly, around the same time, that's obviously when humanity started to evolve as well. Once again, correlation, not causation, but still a somewhat intriguing coincidence. But the second study here decided to focus on the clouds themselves and specifically on the potential effects these clouds might have as the entire solar system travels through them. And turns out that in the last few millions of years, the entire solar system possibly passed through at least two really dense interstellar clouds that might have actually dramatically changed the climatic conditions. In other words, that second paper suggests that traveling through some of these clouds seems to have way more effect than any supernova with this passage potentially even happening twice. First time approximately 7 million years ago, when the solar system entered one of the clouds near the edge of the local bubble, and more recently about 2 million years ago, when it entered the region scientists refer to as the local links of cold cloud, which is actually part of another structure referred to as the local ribbon of cold clouds that seems to be an unusual string of relatively large clouds not so far from the solar system. We've actually discussed this in one of the previous videos in the description, but in essence it resembles something like this. They essentially look like relatively tiny puffs of smoke, with the actual picture visible right here, made entirely out of hydrogen. And so in this study, in contrast, the scientists suggest that it might be the passage through these clouds and not necessarily the supernova that possibly created all of these effects, including maybe even Iron 60. And that's because when the solar system passed through these clouds, it had a very dramatic effect on the solar heliosphere, shrinking it dramatically and essentially leaving Earth completely unprotected from various interstellar elements. Now, at the moment, heliosphere actually protects planet Earth from a lot of stuff out there, and it even diverts certain particles and a lot of cosmic radiation, which would be otherwise falling onto our planet. But during this time, approximately 2 million years ago and possibly 7 million years ago, so essentially on two separate occasions, Earth and the solar system dove right through these regions with the density of these clouds compressing the solar wind and exposing our own planet to the interstellar medium. Which is maybe why we're seeing so many elements in various sediments and why we're seeing so many different effects as if it was from a supernova. And so here the interaction between these clouds and the entire solar system potentially dramatically affected the planet, and specifically it might have affected the atmosphere of planet Earth. In this recent study, scientists discovered that this might have dramatically increased the levels of hydrogen reaching the planet, with all of this hydrogen now converted into water molecules, leading to a dramatic change in the upper atmosphere and possibly even decrease of the ozone layer, as well as dramatic increase in what's known as noctilucent clouds. And these clouds and a lot of other effects from a lot of this hydrogen may have dramatically increased the cloud cover, blocking approximately 7% of sunlight and maybe even cooling down the planet, with all of this possibly playing a role in affecting the glaciation period in the last 3 million years. And very likely a lot of other effects, including increased radiation because of the decrease in the ozone layer, at least in the upper atmosphere. And because this passage would take at least 100,000 years, 
these would be relatively long-term effects. But exactly how this affected the planet in terms of evolution of life is once again currently unclear. Nevertheless, what is clear from a lot of these studies is that in just the last 11 million years, because of the regions where the sun traveled and because of the way it travels across the galaxy, it's quite likely we've experienced a lot of different effects that might have all been caused by either nearby supernova traveling through gas clouds or the dramatic shifts in the upper atmosphere of planet Earth that were all caused by the interaction with the interstellar medium. Naturally though, this cannot be confirmed until later studies that investigate even more sediments or until we have even more probes in interstellar space that can tell us a little bit more about what's out there outside of the solar system so we can then compare it to what we found inside deposits right here on planet Earth. Either way though, exciting studies and exciting discoveries and something we'll discuss even more in future studies once we have additional discoveries. Check out some of the links including this map in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.